Hello valued viewers, I hope you're doing very well. It's late December 2023 and it's very exciting. We now have access to the first installation of the fire control radar in the AH-64 Apache. We're going to go through a look at the features that are available on this first installation. So first and most obviously, we want to check that we've actually got the radar installed on the aircraft. Press F2 and look, if it's got a big thing there, it's got the radar. If it hasn't, it hasn't got the radar and you do need the radar. The only way I know to fix that at the moment if you don't have it is to go to the mission editor to select your aircraft go to additional properties and make sure fire control radar is not removed and you can see it there the air to ground radar in the apache is very effective and unlike versions in fighter aircraft that we have it's highly automated it aims to remove as much workload from the pilot as possible and it's actually really useful it can be controlled equally from either seat but only one seat at a time first we have to do some boring bits controls if you're anything like me you will struggle with apache controls so let's go over what we need for this video we're going to show this video using the radar and the hellfires equally from the pilot and the cpg seat so first ah64d pilot here let's start with collective stick Importantly, we need to take control of the fire control radar with sight select switch. We can select various sensors, but obviously we just want the fire control radar for today. The FCR has four main modes and we can change those modes here. Mode switch, ATM, GTM, RMAP and TPM. Currently only GTM is available, so just that switch. Next, and still under the collective category, we need fire control radar scan size switch. Down, left, right and up and that will change the width of our scan to actually perform the scans we have two modes single burst or continuous burst so bind both of those we'll need our cursor cursor controller up down left and right and cursor enter depress for up down left and right you could also of course have the hocas axis equivalent but i'm just going for the basic up down left right buttons Next, we'll go to the cyclic, and we need, obviously, to fire the weapons. Uh, weapons trigger switch, first detent and second detent. I think first detent actually fires the missile. And we'll need to action or waz the weapon. So we need weapon action switch M right. For the pilot, that should be all we need. Let's check out CPG. In the collective stick, identical to the pilot, so I won't bother going over that again. Next, we have left hand grip. You'll need the trigger again, first detent, second detent, and your WAS again. Uh, weapons action switch M missile. And finally, we need a right hand grip. If we can find it, there it is. And that's where we're going to find a pretty useful feature that only the CPG can use, which is this guy right hand grip manual tracker, man track switch, left and right. At some point you may need George AI helper here and you may need to set not axis your George helper up down left right and hide and that's the controls for today. Next let's look how to power the fire control radar on. So we're going to go to our fire control radar screen. We're going to test whether it's on or not and we know it's on because we can show the scope of the radar here. If that wasn't there radar would be unpowered. Well let's pretend it's not. Let's unpower it. So if we go to util here unselect fire control radar there it's no longer powered. Well let's turn it on so we're going to cycle it from norm to pinned and back to norm that will start powering it up again it starts with a built-in test which takes about a minute but we can skip that if we want by pressing here boof we now have the radar up and running again and we know because we've got the scope next let's show how to take control of the fire control radar in the rear here we do not have control yet we'll have to press the button that i showed to site select the fire control radar let's press that Boof, we now have control of the radar. If we go through to the front seat and just get rid of my eyepiece, get rid of my pilot, we can do the same. So fire control radar, and um, currently it's not under our control to get control, sight, select, switch, fire control radar, and now we've got control of it. Now look what happens when we go back to the pilot. We've lost control of it, so we need to take control of it again. So you're going to fight over control for it. The guy that has the extra symbology on the side is the guy that has control of the radar. Let's look at the symbologies, function, and control. Why don't we first go from the fire control radar screen into util? Two options of interest at the moment. One, elevation. The radar can be slewed manually up 
down, left and right. To change the elevation, the up and down, we can either have that auto controlled or manual controlled. Back to auto. Also, what I said at the very beginning of this video is that this is an intelligent radar. It can scan, it can find targets, it can classify what those targets are and put them in a list of priority. How does it decide what that priority is? Well, we can change that a bit here with the scheme. Press scheme. We can have scheme A, B or C. A prioritizes static and moving targets. B prioritizes static targets and C prioritizes moving targets. That's all we want in util for the time being. So, symbology. First, the scope, a top-down scope. We are there facing that way. The range maxes out at 8 kilometers, about 5 miles. So that's 2, 4, 6 and 8 kilometers. It will be able to see a static non-moving target at about 6 kilometers and a moving target up to about 8 kilometers. At the top, we have, of course, our magnetic heading tape. C-scope, currently not functional. We have arrows to slew the radar manually left and right. So if we go over to our TSD here, you can see that's where the radar is facing currently. If I were to go left, one notch left, one full sweep left and right, one full sweep right. That's actually really useful. Put that back. Regards the azimuth coverage of the radar, we can change with those four commands we saw earlier, the scan zone. That amount of azimuth, that amount of azimuth, that amount of azimuth, and that amount of azimuth. With that azimuth selected, we can now use the arrows again to move one amount left or right. We have additional controls in the CPG, the manual track switch left and right to manually slew it. We have a target option here, as far as I'm aware. It doesn't do anything at the moment. There's no literature to cover it, so we'll just skip over that for now. Elevation, currently on auto. If we wanted it manual, click there, and we could slew the antenna manually up and down, and we can see a scale at the bottom there showing our current antenna elevation. I'm going to put that back to auto. We have, of course, our cursor here, and we can use our cursor controls, as we saw before, to move about. We have our usual advisory symbology at the bottom, including at the bottom right, our high action display. We have our normal acquisition source here. Zoom is currently not functional, and that's all we have at the moment. Bearing in mind that we've only got one of the four main modes, GTM working, that is what it will default to at the moment. That's all we can do until we start taking it off. So we are going to take, in fact, let me show you where we are. We are here. This is a mission that I will link in the video description if you want to try it as well. I've set a bunch of vehicles in the area that we can scan. I've set them quite spaced apart so that it will work the radar to its extremes. It will be relatively easy to find them on the radar, but I've deliberately made them difficult to shoot on the radar, and you'll see what I mean. We've got a mixture of uh, SAMs, of uh, wheeled vehicles, or sorry, track vehicles, Wheeled vehicles, some moving, some static, and we've got some helicopters. So off we go, and this is where I always suffer, because as you know, I'm not a very good helicopter pilot. Press I, put our iHads back on. Here's another thing I've done for awkwardness as well. You can see the terrain ahead is deliberately curving away from us. The radar obviously works on line of sight. So in this case, we're going to have to go up very high. Now, don't worry, this mission, we have no threat. But in reality, you will have a threat, and therefore you want to go only as high as you need to to see the targets, to expose yourself as little as possible, obviously. All right, that should just about do us. Uh, I'm going to hover, and I'm going to cheat just by putting it on active pause for now. So nothing can be done until we do our scans. If you remember, we have single burst and continuous burst. Single burst will take a series of radar images and show them on our screen until further notice. Continuous burst will continually update with new scans and images and continually add them to the scope until told otherwise. I'm going to use continuous burst and I've not found a reason yet to use single burst but I'm sure there is a very good reason. So I've pressed it and it will now scan until we tell it to stop. We just press it again, obviously it will stop. So at the top right in this box it shows the number of targets found. It can only show up to 16. 16 because that's the maximum number of radar hellfires that we can use and obviously that's what this is set up to take advantage of. Those targets 
are identified. It finds the type of vehicle that they are and it assesses the threat of them and puts them in an order 1 to 16, 1 being the highest priority target. Each target is classified with a symbol. So a H or a ladder like that is a tracked vehicle. A circle like that is a wheeled vehicle. A triangle like that is an air defense unit, a SAM or a uh, surface to air gun. A bow tie like that is a helicopter. Each of those symbols can also be filled or non-filled. If they're filled, like that wheel vehicle there with a small black square in the middle, they're moving. If they're hollow in the center, like that wheel vehicle, then they're not moving. This is a good time to say that the TSD, which repeats what we can see there, is not limited to 16. The TSD can show over 60 targets. And the way it differentiates between the 16 high priority targets that are shown over here is that it will have them full size on the TSD, where the non-priority targets will be shown as half size on the TSD. But I don't actually have any more than 16, so it's irrelevant today. Next, we need to show our top two most prioritized targets. So that's targets one and two. Target one is shown by a diamond here. It's currently a dotted diamond, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The diamond shows NTS, next target to shoot. It's our current highest priority target that has not been shot at. If we were to fire a missile now, it will go for that target. Also, we have an ANTS, our alternate next to shoot. That's the next one down the list. If we were to shoot at the NTS now, then the NTS would move to that one there. And then far again, it would move to the next in the series until all 16 or 15 in this case had been shot at. We can manually choose our NTS if we like. There's two ways of doing it. First, if I move my cursor away, we can press NTS here and we can cycle through, in this case, all 15 targets until we've got to the one that we want. But let's try and put it back where it was. Also, we can use our cursor here to move over to a target, that trapped vehicle there, and press cursor, enter, depress, and we've now manually selected it there. So what happens at this point is we want to start engaging things. Make sure our master arm on is on, otherwise none of this will work. We now need to action our Hellfire missile, so WAS uh, right. You can see now with WAS that the diamond has gone non-dotted. That means we're all in good conditions to fire, but it's not quite that simple. So we're going to put our IHADs back on and look for any advisory problems. And there are none. So in this case, we're good to fire. Uh, all we've got to do is press and hold, obviously, the first detent of the trigger and a missile will go out. And when it does, watch what happens here. Missile away. You can see the NTS has moved to the previous position of the ANTS and the ANTS has moved to what would be target 3. And we just repeat like that. We can sit and shoot all 15. So press and hold again. Missile away. Next is that one there. Press and hold again. And you can see it's deliberately made so that we can pop up above a tree, ripple off 16 hellfires and go back down again. Fire again. Now, you're going to ask about IFF and stuff like that, and that's going to be mainly controlled in fire zones, which we're not looking at today. We're just looking at the basic operation of the radar and firing at the missiles. It's got the next one, fire again. We haven't run into any problems yet. Ah, we've run into our first problem. That one over there is next NTS, and it's out of our yaw limit of being able to fire our missile. The only solution I'm aware of is to physically turn our helicopter left. And I'm a little lazy, and I want to start using the CPG, so I'm going to go through to the CPG, press 2 on my keyboard, and let's start getting everything set up here. So, like most things in the Apache, it's super simple. It's, uh, left screen, FCR, and our middle screen, FCR. We need to take control of it, so site select FCR. Boof, we've got control of it. We need our master arm switch on, which it is. I'm going to waz our Hellfire. Hellfire wazzed. And again, your limit, same problem, obviously. Well, I'm lazy, so I want my AI pilot to fly the helicopter for me. So I'm going to unhide my George Helper AI menu. There it is. It's going to be in HB, so it's going to be in hover. I'm going to unpause, and hopefully it won't go weird or crash. Oh, sweet, he is. Uh, 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 well, hopefully you won't destroy us. That's what happens with you mess when you mess around with pause viewers for doing videos like this. You might just bounce us back up. We might be able to carry on. Yeah, look at that. Resilient George. 
right back up. Right, viewers, so what we're going to do next is to physically point our head. I'm running out of fuel, I'm aware, but it's fine. Um, I'm going to physically point my head in the direction of the NTS, uh, and I'm going to go to here to find out where it is. It's off to our left there, and we need to turn our eye hands back on. Oh, something happened when I was doing that. I lost... I guess the target and it's now selected to be a new one uh, I guess yeah because I must have dipped down and reacquired the targets well that was unexpected but you know what let's just go for it so we should be able to fire if I was the missile on whatever I've got selected there go and it's not and that's because when I crashed my master arm turned off whoops back on fire well this is an interesting tutorial isn't it viewers but you know what stuff like this happens right another one and it's within your fire another one it's within your fire uh within your fire within your fire uh, sorry i forgot something really important viewers uh, a shot cue um after a missile has been shot at a target a cross goes through it that shows you that the target has not necessarily been hit because it might not have been hit but it's been shot at and that's how it knows not to go and back and reshoot that target obviously right still in your fire Oh, can't fire. Ah, uh, no, acquire. I need to rewaz the hellfire. Rewaz, fire. Right, finally hit one. Uh, that's out of my yaw limit. So I'm going to point my head roughly to the guy, and we know where he is relative because we're going to look on our TSD. It's about 30 degrees left. I'm going to George helper right short, and George will move the chopper, and we're no longer out of your limit. And fire, and no acquisition. Rewaz the hellfire, and fire. Right, we're getting there, viewers. Uh, where's our next one? Your limit here. Where is he? He's. I'm looking for the diamond, obviously, viewers. 30 degrees right. Boof. Turn. All right. Within your limit, fire. Out of your limit again. Where are I now? Because we are after that on the left. So, uh, no, we're within limit. Fire. I think we're actually starting to shoot at guys we've shot at before now, but that's fine. Doesn't really matter. Within your limit, fire. How on earth many missiles have I actually got on this thing? Two left. Right, what's happening now? Your limit. So I need to aim uh, left. And we can use our guidance box as well to tell us where to aim, but I'm just being... Right, go on, turn that way, please. Fire. Uh, right, where now? Fire. Am I finally out of missiles? Right, I've shot at all my targets. Um, and I've actually done relatively well. Bearing in mind that we lost contact with most of them when my helicopter crashed, which was a bit silly, I'm aware. But that is all but four taken out. I oh, know, sorry, all but five taken out. Bear in mind, to be honest, I've just used this for the first time pretty much five minutes ago. I'm moderately happy with that. And it shows how easy it is to use if an idiot like me can do it. In reality, obviously, it's a bit more difficult if you don't pause um, or have the guy helping you. If you're going to pilot it yourself, you have to learn to hover very well, and that's difficult. But that is the function of the radar at the moment. Uh, pilots, anything to add to that? The uh, the only difference between continuous and uh, single burst mode that I can think of is whether or not you're in a emissions permissive environment, whether or not it's uh, you've got a lot of enemy out there that can track your emissions. So having a single burst uh, rather than a continuous would uh, throw off just one point of track instead of continuous points of track. Right. So like someone who would see your radar emissions. Yeah. All right, viewers, I hope that was useful and bye-bye.